Hey everyone, welcome back to our video series on the PanOS Python SDK. If you're looking to master the ins and outs of automating network security tasks with Palo Alto Networks, you're in the right place. In our journey so far, we've tackled the basics of the PanOS SDK, delving into the concept of objects and how they interact with each other. We even got our hands a little dirty setting up security policies and network configurations using the SDK. But today we're gonna to move a layer deeper into the SDK to explore some of the available methods, the roles, the operations, and more importantly, how you can wield them to make your network security task a breeze. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at some of the destructive and non-destructive methods and some key navigation methods. Now understanding these methods is crucial for effectively using the SDK to automate our network security task. Now the SDK comes loaded with multitude of methods. Some of these help us manipulate our configuration by adding, removing, and updating objects. Others allow us to align to our local config to the live device, or aid us in finding objects in our configuration and delivering vital information about them. It's crucial, it's crucial, and I know I keep repeating myself, but it's very, very important that we understand these methods and how they fall into two different categories, destructive and non-destructive. In a nutshell, destructive methods could potentially overwrite an existing object on the live device if another object with the same name is pushed from our script. On the flip side, non-destructive methods work hand in hand with the existing config, updating the attributes from our script, but leaving all other attributes as is. Now for native English speakers, this kind of explanation is probably of little value but I wanna make sure that everyone has a clear understanding as to what we're talking about when we say destructive and non-destructive methods. All right, with this covered, we can now pivot and talk a little bit about some of the more common methods that you'll find when working with the PanOS Python SDK. The first method to talk about is the add method. This method is used to add a child object to the parent object. If you recall our analogy with Lego blocks, this is like attaching a smaller Lego block to a larger one. Here's an example of using the add method. Now in this example, we're creating a new address object for new address. We're then attaching that child element to the firewall object above. Now, if this workflow doesn't quite make sense, make sure to check out our previous video where we talked a lot about object-oriented programming and the concept of objects inheriting other objects. But as just a quick overview, the firewall object has all the information about the firewall and it's passing that down to its child elements whenever we use the add method. Let's move next to the apply method. This is a destructive method that pushes an object to the live device. And if an object with the same name already exists on the device, the apply method is going to override it with the object that you're pushing here. Let's look at an example. In this code, we're pushing our address object to the live firewall. If an address object named new address already exists on the firewall, it's going to be overwritten with our new object here. Okay, this is a good start. We see new address has been added now to our firewall config. Let's go back and create another address object with the same name, but a different value. We're going to follow the same exact workflow of attaching the address object to the firewall object, running the apply method. And what do you think the results going to be on the firewall? Once we run our refresh on the page, we can see that the new address address object still exists, but now its subnet 
is 192.168.3.0 instead of .2. This is because the apply method is destructive. Again, if it's got the same name as an object that already exists on the firewall, the firewall's object will be overwritten with what's in our Python code. All right, so let's pause for a little bit. We're in this awkward situation right now. See, we created an address object of, called new address, and we gave it the value of 192.168.2.0 slash 24. And then we applied it to the lab firewall device object. And then we ran the apply method. This pushed the address object to the firewall like we saw. Then we created a new address object, went through the same process of attaching it to the parent object of the firewall, running the apply method. But now here, here we're in this weird situation to where the firewall will only have one instance of this name, which in our case is gonna be the last time we ran the apply method. So that's the 192.168.3.0. But in our Python configuration tree, the device for lab firewall 01, that object has two address objects with the same name, new address and new address. We can see that here if I run the dot children against the firewall object itself. So let's clean this up a little bit. And this is where the remove by name method really comes into play. What this enables us to do is effectively remove from our Python configuration tree a child element that belongs to a parent object. Now, the way that we do this is that when we run this method, we first pass in the name of the object and then the type of object. So as we can see here, I run this method the first time, it has gone ahead and subtracted one instance of this object from our device. And if I run it again, as we can see, it's gonna completely empty out the lab firewall 01, which effectively makes it an empty container again. No children elements associated to this parent object. Now, refresh all is a class method that retrieves all objects of a specific type from the live device and populates them in your local Python configuration tree. This method can be used to refresh the local environment with the latest config from the live device. For instance, if we wanted to get all address objects configured on a firewall, we can use this method. We call refresh all on the address object passing in our firewall instance as the argument. This will retrieve all address objects from the live firewall and add them to our local firewall object, effectively syncing our local config with the live device. The find all method on the other hand operates on the local configuration tree exclusively. It's used to find all objects of a specific type within your local config. It doesn't fetch anything from the live firewall device, but again, just searches through your local Python config. Here's the example. All right, so here we are again. We've got a lab firewall 01 created with no address objects attached to it. Let me run the find all method on this firewall, searching for all instances of address objects. Now, as you can expect, we're gonna get a list that comes back, but that list is going to be empty. So when I iterate over this list and ask to print them all to the screen, I get nothing back. Makes sense, right? So let's change this again. Let's add three new address objects. And just as a point of example, I'm only going to add the first two to my firewall object. Now let's run this find all method again, asking the firewall to present us with all instances of address objects. 
I get another list back, but this time when I iterate over the list, I see the two address objects that we did attach to the object. Let's loop through our address object list and print some information about each object. This is where the about method comes in. Now running the about method is gonna return a dictionary of a key value pair of the object's attributes. Now I hope that you forgive me for repeating myself here, but there's such a significant value in what's going on here by what's being provided from the PanOS Python SDK. You see, when we look at the configuration on a PanOS firewall or Panorama, all of the data is inherently structured within the XML data format. And XML is tremendously powerful, but it's not everyone's favorite to work with for various amounts of reasons around XPath, and we're not gonna get down that rabbit hole. But suffice to say, the PanOS Python SDK here is handling the XML translation from XML into a Python dictionary. Now we have the object that represents our configuration in a native Python format that's easy to work with. The delete method is used to delete an object from the live device and the local config tree. You probably didn't need me to tell you this, but this is a destructive operation. Here's an example of how we can use this. Well, in this example, we're deleting the new address object we created earlier from both the live firewall and our local firewall object. The find method is extremely useful for locating specific objects in our config. Suppose we have an address object named Office Network, and we want to find it in our firewall config. Here's how we can do that. Here, the firewall is our device object, and we're calling the find method upon it. We pass in the name of our object that we're looking for, in this case, Office Network, and then the type of object, which in our case is an address object. The method will return the first object that matches these criteria and we'll store that into the office network object variable. Now let's take a little peek at this. When we look at the type of object that office network is, we see that it's registered as a none type. Why do you think that is? The reason that we get a none object back is because we're looking explicitly at the local Python config tree when we use the find method, just like when we use the find all method. So the way that I can actually retrieve this object by using the find method, I'm gonna need to run the refresh all on our firewall object and ask for all instances of address objects. Once we use refresh all on our firewall and specify that we're asking for address objects, we're gonna update lab firewall one with all the existing address objects. At this point, we can rerun the find method, asking again for the name of our address object and the type, and we'll actually have the configuration available for us. The XPath method returns the XPath of an object. The XPath is a string that represents the location of the object within the configuration tree of the XML file. Here's how you can get the XPath of our Office Network object. And finally, we have the commit method. Now, if you've ever used a Panorama or PanOS firewall before, this should be fairly intuitive. What we're effectively doing is we're taking all of the changes that we made within the candidate configuration and we're pushing them into the running configuration on the device. When we run this method, we're gonna get a string that represents the job ID. 
Now, if we would like, we can actually perform a request to get the status of this job ID. But for now, just understand that this is what we're gonna get whenever we run this method. Remember, these are just few of the many methods available in the PanOS Python SDK. Highly encourage you to go check out the documentation to understand other useful methods out there. Practicing these methods and exploring all these others is gonna become vital for you to become more comfortable with managing your Palo Alto networks using the SDK. And there you have it, folks. We've gone through this exciting journey of exploring some of the essential methods in the PanOS Python SDK from adding and removing objects with add and remove by name, to diving into details with about and committing our changes with commit. We've seen how these methods can be leveraged for managing our configuration of our Palo Alto Networks devices. And remember, with these tools in your belt, you're gonna be equipped to perform a wide array of tasks, from manipulating objects in the config, to locating specific objects, getting information about your existing objects, or even saving your changes. These are all key to mastering your device configurations with the SDK. On our next video, we're going to get a little bit more hands-on, but we're going to be focusing on all the panorama-specific configs. Talk about things like device groups and templates and template stacks and template variables. These are all indispensable when it comes to managing multiple firewalls with efficiency. So make sure you stay tuned for that one. I hope this video has been valuable. If so, Make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel for more content tailored to your needs. Let's convince the YouTube algorithm that security automation is the coolest thing on the planet. And we can only do that by your interacting with this video. So drop your thoughts, any questions, just say hello in the comment. I'll be sure to respond.